Web globalization is a journey, and I find it valuable to know not just where you're headed, but where you've come from. This presentation is a brief, high-level overview of the globalization of one selected website, apple.com. Now, a little bit about me. My name is John Yunker. I co-founded Bite Level Research in 2000, and since 2003 have studied the evolution of several hundred global websites, including Apple, through the Web Globalization Report Card. I also have consulted quite a bit with many of, uh, of the world's leading brands, and I'm also author of the book, Think Outside the Country. Now, back in 2003, when I began the report card, Apple looked like this. The iPhone did not yet exist. Uh, Apple was primarily selling iMacs, although the iPod was, was brand new. And at the time, Apple supported just 14 languages and didn't do necessarily the best job of supporting these languages. But in 2005, the iPod was taking off and uh, the localization of the website uh, started to pick up a little bit more, even though the languages uh, stayed, held steady at 14. And depth of localization, as you can see here with, with Korean, is very uneven. Um, yes, the, uh, the, the main header, the main UI is, is localized, but the promotional content is not. The UI of the device is not promoted that way as well. So it's very uneven at this time. And also, uh, from a global navigation perspective, the global gateway, which was uh, buried in the footer, relied on a pull-down menu and a flag icon. And flags are, are a theme I will return to as we watch Apple evolve. A few years later, Apple added a few languages. Apple is starting to, to expand globally once again. And you can see there's a number of products uh, being presented around the world. And uh, here are a few selected global gateway links from the footer. Now, I wanted to highlight one that does not have a flag, and that's Taiwan. Because from a geopolitical perspective, the Taiwan flag is a sensitive issue uh, to, to many within China, mainland China. There are many other reasons why flags can be dangerous to use, and I'll touch on that in, in a second. In 2010, the iPhone is here and going strong. And what do you see here? Apple has doubled down on languages. They're now supporting 32 languages as they're really ramping up global expansion. Uh, I was optimistic at the time with this redesign that Apple would move on from flags, uh, as, as evidenced here from a, a, a specific sector of the website. But unfortunately, the main global gateway was continued to rely on flags, uh, as you can see here. Now, why are flags troublesome beyond geopolitics? Well, uh, visually, it, when you have this many flags in one place, you'll notice a lot of shared colors. So from a, from a quick look, usability perspective, it's not necessarily useful uh, to, and easy to find your specific flag because there's so many shared colors. Also, it takes up a lot of real estate. And in Apple's case, uh, Apple has a number of regional websites that don't have flags. So it's not a, the most scalable solution as well. In 2015, Apple ticked up slightly in languages. Uh, and is starting to do a much better job of, of drilling down in terms of depth of localization uh, as, and also highlighting the, the, uh, the range of localized products to uh, really play up the, this holistic localized product UI. Uh, and of course, China is front and center with the company. They're really investing in China through localized, local specific uh, advertising and promotional content on the website. And a social media, of course, in China. In 2018, uh, iPhone is going strong. Language, uh, breadth of languages ticks up yet again. Uh, and sadly, even though there's a redesign, the flags have, have stayed, uh, stayed around. Um, but in 2020, there was a change made to global, global navigation and an improvement here, even though you'll still see the, uh, the flag here in, above the header. But what Apple is doing here is it's now using geolocation. 
So if you're based in South Korea and you visit apple.com, you see this little he header message that's letting you know that there is a website that is available and localized and, and available for you in, in South Korea. Uh, here's an example for Vietnam, which is not a localized site, sadly, at the time, uh, but it's a similar, uh, similar solution. So geolocation is, is an effective strategy if you use it well. Um, it, it's a very powerful tool. Um, but once again, as you can see here, flags are still in use until the end of 2020 when Apple made an important change, which is still evidenced right now if you visit apple.com. Here we go. Uh, the Russian uh, homepage with a header uh, letting you know that there's a U.S. Uh, website available. What, what's, what do you see here? Or more importantly, what do you not see here? You do not see the U.S. flag because the Global Gateway in late 2020 was updated to remove flags. And this is a huge step forward for Apple. Uh, I, I, it's going to allow Apple to, to scale more readily, to present a more uh, lightweight Global Gateway page here. In fact, they've got room to spare. They could actually fit a lot more locales and a lot less space because they're no, no longer using flags. So this is a huge step forward for the uh, for the website. Now, linguistically or global reach, uh, let's take a look uh, at that evolution. So in 2004, 14 languages, and then over the years, it uh, more than doubled to 35 where we stand today. And that sounds like a lot of languages, and it is a lot of languages. Uh, it's slightly better than the average number of languages supported by the websites studied in the 2021 report card. But if we take a step back and look at uh, direct competitors and other consumer-oriented sites, you can see that Apple at 35 falls behind Microsoft and Samsung. And if we really look at companies that are focused uh, around the world in a big way, like an Airbnb at 62 languages or a Facebook at 109 languages, Apple still has a lot of growing to do. And I believe it needs to do that as it continues to expand globally. So looking ahead, I, there is reason to expect more languages from Apple, uh, hopefully considerably more languages. I highlighted this example uh, because there is some degree of Vietnamese supported currently uh, in, in, on the Apple ID site, even though there's not a formal localized website for Vietnam. But I do believe that Apple has to significantly increase its linguistic uh, range going forward. Also, it's very promising to see Apple uh, support now Apple Translate. Uh, this is similar to Google Translate, about 15 years after Google Translate, but hugely important, not just for consumers, because uh, you can build this into browsers, which Apple is doing, and as a, a standalone app, but it allows Apple to start to develop machine translation to further its uh, not only breadth of languages, but depth of content for users around the world. So looking ahead, I, I'm optimistic that the year ahead could see Apple uh, add languages. I think Apple is due to do just that. I would love to see Apple double its language reach in the years ahead. And hopefully I'll, when I do this video again in a year from now or, or beyond, I will be saying something along those lines. So to learn more, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear what websites you'd like to see me profile in the future. I've, I've tracked the evolution of, of many of them. Um, you can reach me at bytelevel.com, and you can also uh, check out my blog at globalbydesign.com. Thank you for watching.